outro cast. Jack, Maggie, such an honor and a privilege to be speaking with both of you because I loved the original French version of the show and I love the version of your show as well. So I'm going to ask the same question at both of you, but Maggie first. How much of the French version of the show had you seen before being cast in the role? Oh, wow. Well, I approached this with enormous trepidation because I had seen every one of them, probably twice because it was one of the two series that took me through lockdown and kept me sane. I thought it was the wittiest, most wonderful, stylish, and I love anything French, do you know what I mean? Everything about it I thought was wonderful. So it was a pretty nervous time. And I knew I knew the scripts were very different, you know, very tight, because John Morton is like one of our very best writers. Um, with wonderful uh, rhythms to it, do you know? And I knew that was going to be its own difficult job to do and would take us away, in a way, from the fear of the rest, because that was frightening enough. So, really, that was the... <laughs> in the end, that was the job that had to be done. But, oh, wow, yeah, no, the first one was extraordinary. I get it. Uh, Jack, same question oh. goes at you, because Matea's character, you put definitely... Th- there's so many differences between you and the original... Yeah, right. there are similarities to it. So I'm curious as to how much tape you studied to use an American sports analogy. It's, it's all right. I live in America. I, I know about that <laughs> that analogy. Um, uh, so, well, I had I had seen some of it. Um, uh, I when it first kind of surfaced on Netflix a few years ago, mm-hmm. I, I kind of I, you know the algorithm knew me well enough to go, <laughs> oh, you might like this, um, and I I thought it was charming. And I, but here's the thing: we live in the era of peak TV. There's a lot of good stuff out there, and I watched, I probably half a season, and then you know just life intervenes or what have you. And then this came up, and as when I got the job, I was like, to be honest, I can't watch it now. I mean, when we're all done and dusted, whenever that may be, I'm sure I will out of curiosity because everyone seems to love it so much. And I loved what I saw. And the thing is, is that, you know, without it, we would not be having this conversation. You know, they, they are, they are our Eskimos in this and, and, it, and it's, and it's a beautiful superstructure to kind of build out from, but as Maggie said, you know, the, the John Morton of it all is very important here because his co- comedic tone, his tone in general is very much his thing. Um, and also, surprise, surprise, there are profound cultural differences between the French and the English. And, yes. you, and, so, and so I think we have as much fun with Britishness as they do with Frenchness. Yeah. Um, Britishness uh, and, and but, Frenchness, yes. And, <laughs> and they are, you know, and there's only, tw- the, ch- the English Channel is only 26 miles wide, but we might as well be on the moon. <laughs> uh, c- compared to each other, so I think there's a lot of um, of divergence in that respect. And also, let's not forget the Hollywood of it all, which is that you know, in the anglophone world, you know, th- the relationship between Hollywood and the UK is is vigorous and has been yeah. for a century. Sure. And so we're we're able to kind of play around with that a lot more. Where in, whereas the, the poor French one had to find the only Hollywood actor in the world that speaks French in Sigourney Weaver. Um, uh, but there aren't any others. Um, but we yeah. can kind of, you know, we can, we can borrow from that um, arena much more readily, I think. Yes. And Maggie, this goes back at you. The character that you've adapted, Arlette always has her dog with her. Yes. In your case, you always have the dog. I do. Uh, the dog is named Matthias, or yes, it's a variation. That's a tribute, you it's a, see. It's an Easter egg. It's a tribute to, to, the, uh, to the first series. I think it's rather sweet, don't you? <laughs> oh, absolutely. So I was curious if you were a dog person or you had to learn to be a dog person. <laughs> I'm completely a dog person. I've got two very bad and beautiful lurchers at home. And people always said to me, well, why couldn't you have one of those? I said, no, they would have been far too needy, you know. <laughs> They would have been leaping all over the camera. Whenever we, whenever we do uh, Zoom read-throughs, one of my dogs leaps on my shoulder and licks me to death. So I couldn't have had that. But I am a very dog person. Yeah. Oh, I, I, will, I will second that. She surely is. <laughs> uh, so, Jack, we just clarified, you know, how much tape you studied. Again, mm-hmm. to use that American analogy. 
but it's such a complex character that you're playing, you know, without giving spoilers mm -hmm. away, we see yeah. him ultimately being funny and serious and backstabbing ish mm -hmm. and honest and, and all of that. Is this the most complex role that you've had to play? It is. Uh, and and I, I can say without reservation that it is the part of a lifetime. I, 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 I can't believe I've had the opportunity to play him. And I, and I honestly, when I started, I didn't, I didn't expect this character to go on this journey um, because, as you rightly pointed out, there are kind of narrative engines for my character, which are which for any person would be enormous things to take on board and to try and navigate in the right. in the middle of trying to run a business, let alone the rest of it. And and I yeah, I'm I, I will be forever grateful to john for taking a chance on me to play it and for, to everyone else for just being incredible but no you're not wrong it's it is it's an absolute gift as roles go um i can't i still can't quite believe i got to do it <laughs> maggie you did yes uh agents uh has doing this role changed your relationship with your agent at all um I'm not sure that it has, because I happen to have enormous respect and affection for my agent. I've had a number of agents, so I know, you know, I know which way the wind blows. It blows all over the world. But it, this, this, playing this role hasn't. I know somebody, uh, I, can, I can't, I'm not going to say her name, but mm -hmm. there, there's a woman agent who I know who is, um, I'm not saying I based her on her at all, but she's very like her. She's very, very sharp. She's very, very straight and she's entirely faithful and she's very dry with her humor. And I feel that she's, you know, she's around in the atmosphere somewhere when, when I'm playing her. It hasn't, no, it hasn't um, altered any of that, but that's because I've got great respect. I could well have had a real shyster for an agent, in which case, you know, and I don't think that I have, you know, I, I think I have been reasonably lucky with the people that have represented me. <laughs> yeah, I, again, uh, not empty praise here. I love this show, both the adaptation and the original. And mm. the approach of the agent is very different than something like Entourage, where in Entourage, the agent was trying to be funnier than everybody, whereas... Yeah you both in your roles kind of know that you're supposed to be in the background and called upon when needed. Yeah. So, Jack, yeah, same question goes at you. Did this change your relationship with your current agent at all? Uh, uh, it did. It didn't. But what it did do was it, um, I, 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 cause I live in the States. I've got an agent here and I've got an agent in the States and, and, and to your point about entourage, um, just as a just like, um tangent, you oh. know, that there's a reason why, the, the, the as it were the US version of 10% has been made and it's entourage because that's how American agencies are constructed they're much bigger mm -hmm. and there's a there's a kind of corporate corporate quality to them because the industry is that much bigger whereas these much more kind of boutique -y, you know small businesses which are with a, with a slightly more sort of personal touch but in terms of my relationship with my agent certainly here in the UK um I'm a, slightly embarrassed to say that I'm in general, I'm not much for research. Um, I, I wish I, I mean, I, I do a bit, but I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I don't go deep. Um, <laughs> and, but I, but I did, um, I took my agent out for lunch and, we, and I had a notepad and I took notes and there were a couple of things that he said to me about the be what it's like being an agent, which would never have occurred to me in terms of the kind of the emotional landscape of what the job entails. And if anything, I had a kind of, I've all, I mean, I have great respect for all of my representatives, but I, it's, I, I got much more of a sense of kind of it's, it's complex emotional terrain because it's, it's, it's like person management and that there's, you know, that it's, they're not, we're not making widgets here, you know, it's, it's, and, and the point you make about, um, part of the job is to is to be in the shadows, mm. and, and that's that also that that's a very particular skill set because you're part of an outward facing industry of a public industry, but and and you're absolutely like the tendons of it. 
but mm-hmm. you're but a good one you never know they're there um because that's that's the game really so um if anything it's deepened my appreciation for what they do mm-hmm. well thank you both so much for your time and the great work you've done over the years and whether it's more 10% or another show, looking forward to it from both of you. Thank you, Darren. Nice to meet you, mate. Likewise. Take care.